Hello again and welcome to the Jazz Violin Podcast. This is episode three and today we're talking to Scott Tixier. Um, apologies for my French, French pronunciation. It's uh, pretty bad, but uh, I hope I've got that name across. Uh, Scott Tixier. Um, he is a New York-based jazz violinist. He's French. Um, we caught up in London when... Uh, Scott was over playing two nights at Ronnie Scott's um, and we managed to find a really small window of time when both of us were free uh, to record the interview. Um, we it, It's a bit rushed, um, so it's only, it's only half an hour, but uh, it's a really great interview and I really enjoyed chatting with Scott. The, uh, the only, only downside as well is that uh, we're in the hotel lobby and you occasionally hear guys uh sort of on their on their phones uh sort of doing business deals in the background but uh other than that it's a really great interview it's really nice to hang out scott's a really great guy scott is a as i said he's based in new york um he, the list of people he has played with is pretty amazing he's uh played with people like kenny barron um he's got chris potter on his most recent album um, and then he's done a lot. He does lots of. He does. He's done and has done a lot of um, stuff with like some really high-end sort of pop artists like Stevie Wonder, John Legend, Ed Sheeran. Um, the list goes on and on. Um, anyway, Scott's a really nice guy, and we had a great chat. Um, hope you enjoy. Was a gig last night. Uh, it was fine. It was yeah, great. It was good. We had a good time. Yeah. Packed, packed house. Was it? Full, sold out. Yeah, it sold out. Ah, cool. Both set. Wicked. Two <laughs> sets. And then same tonight. Uh, I don't know. We we'll find out. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's go. From, let's start from the start. How did you start playing violin? Just yeah. How did you start playing music? Um. Um. I started uh, when I was like um, five years old. Yeah. By classical music and okay. it was very um, very interesting because I wanted to be a classical musician. Ah, did you? When you were five? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to be. Uh, I listened to the Mendelssohn concerto. Yeah. And I wanted to to be that 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 person who plays the violin. Yeah. Because I loved the the, the sounds and the, everything it made to me, you know, like the emotions. Yeah. And, so uh, I was going for this, you know, at the mm -hmm. beginning. <laughs> right. So that when you were, that was when you were five. Yeah, okay. at the conservatory in, uh, near Paris. Okay. Um, what conservatory was that? Uh, it's called. It's a very small conservatory. It was at Ronny Soubois okay. near Paris. Yeah. Like in the in the banlieue. Okay. So you started you started playing classical music, and then how was it that you found uh, jazz? Um, when I was about like thirteen years old. Um, I, I think I'm. A, I listened to Stefan Grappelli. Okay. And uh, I was really into it. Mm -hmm. And later, like a few months later, I met um, Florin Nicolescu. Okay. Who's a great uh, yeah, yeah. violinist from Romania. Mm -hmm. And I had a master class with him. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, started. How was that master class? Was it good? It was great. Uh, he used my violin, he took mm -hmm. my violin, and played with Pirelli, like Ren and Jerry. And it was uh, it was great. It was like um, I started like really getting into into it, yeah. practicing a lot. You know? Yeah. And then uh, I discovered other, other guys, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, who, who else? Uh, like uh, musicians. Yeah. Um, John Coltrane. Yeah, at yeah. the time, John Anderson, mm -hmm. Dexter Gordon. Yeah. Uh, I, I was willing to Hank Mobley. Yeah. And uh, Lester Young. Yeah. Um, I will dig uh, Mike, Michael Tyner and a yeah, yeah. uh, um, lot of people. You know? yeah, yeah. And uh, also Jean Luc Ponty. I met yeah. Jean Luc Ponty when I was like 14 years old. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've spoke to Jean Luc about oh. trying to do this. Oh, yeah. And we nearly had it last time he came to London, oh, nice. but it didn't, didn't happen. Um, okay, so what you met? You met Jean Luc? Yeah, when I was 14. Mm -hmm. uh, in that Paris. must be great. When yeah. You, especially when you're 14, that must have been real, really. Yeah, um, I asked him to. like. Um, Questions and we stay in touch until today. You know, yeah, he yeah. really yeah. has been a good, uh, good um, 
I would say like mentor, yeah, friend, mentor, and uh, inspiration, yeah, in many ways. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, he, he recommended recommended me to to move to to New York, you know, when right. I was 19. Okay. So I did the move thanks mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. So you've been there how long now? Ten uh, years. Uh, Twelve years. I'm going on my twelve years. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you said that you listen to lots of uh, like non-violinists. Yeah, that's a true. Lot of, a lot of them, yeah. yeah. And uh, do you find that? I know I do. Um, <laughs> I find that taking something from like a sax player and putting it on the violin can be really hard. But also really good. Do you find, do you find it different? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends what sax what saxophonist. But um, I think it's more about the voice mm -hmm. because the voice of the is many saxophone player more than violin player. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's that's why um, yeah, we yeah. get influenced by them because yeah. there are so many. But um, if you look at piano player or even like a trumpet player or. Yeah. Uh, other instruments, like yeah. guitarists, or there's al also of, experiences yeah. there. So I think um, it's just a matter of not, uh, of the percentage of uh, saxophone player on yeah. the scene, and also some of the biggest figures that yeah, change yeah. the shape of, of music, like uh, Charlie Parker or yeah. John Coltrane. Yeah. They happen to be saxophone player, but yeah. Bill Evans too change yeah, yeah. the piano and uh, the harmony. Yeah. So someone's got. Something loud going on in the background. <laughs> um, we're doing this interview secretly because the hotel are. Speak easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak easy interview. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they were they were a bit funny about us doing it, but I don't think they're going to notice. So you, yeah, so I just what I just know is that I um, spend a bit of time sort of transcribing Charlie Parker, and I can some, I sometimes find those these things that come up that are just really difficult. You know, you they, they, they oh, yeah. don't. You know, you. I find that I've always got to pick and choose. Some things are going to work and some things don't. I don't know if you ever find that. Some things don't work and you have to transpose in different keys or different um, That's true. Uh, octaves. Yeah. Because, especially when you transcribe tenor saxophone. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you happen to transcribe like um, other instruments that it's too high for violin. Yeah. And I mean, it's never too high for violin, but it's, it's not comfortable to play. Yeah, you can yeah. play it, but it's not uh, the best. Yeah. And yeah. so. Yeah, you have to make some adjustment, but you know that Charlie Parker was transcribing uh, violin, violinist, like mm -hmm. classical violinist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. We don't know that, but uh, Charlie Parker was uh, really digging the violin concerto, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Chefkowski yeah. and uh, the Brahms concerto. So, all those things, I've heard a lot of saxophone players, they want to sound like violinists. Mm -hmm. They always tell me, like, uh, I have my friend, uh, his name is Dinah Stevens. Okay. He's a great uh, saxophone player. He told me once, uh, oh man, I wish I could do glisten do like, like you do. Oh really? So, you yeah, know, yeah. I think it's uh, really about the voice, like developing yeah. your own voice and and then you find uh, ways to uh, gather ideas from uh, other players. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, it's not an, an obsession for me anymore. It used to be an obsession. It's trying not. to sound, yeah, try to, to sound like a saxophone player, but I'm trying to sound like like me, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the things like uh, sometimes I'm inf influenced by saxophonists, but sometimes I could be influenced by other violin player now. Yeah. And I'm trying to to get more into the uh, the music in general and mm -hmm. not look at the instrument too much. Yeah. And then uh, there's the technique too, but so it's like a, yeah. it's a difficult like. Um, Balance what you have yeah, to find. That is true, yeah. especially if you're trying to work on technique and then and then the rest of the time trying to forget about it being a violin. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, other things I was gonna. Well, I guess what would be cool. To, what What was your sort of process for when you first started learning it to improvise? Like, do you remember when you were when you were first like say for, you were first trying to learn a jazz song? How did you How did you go about it? I don't really remember the first time I tried to learn a jazz song, but I remember some of the first songs I learned. Mm -hmm. So I just remember that I was uh, really um, focusing on the um, on the changes more than the mm -hmm. actual melody. Mm -hmm. the, to, it was just a pretext, uh, yeah. an excuse to improvise. So yeah. I was focusing on changes and uh, on the solo parts. Yeah. But uh, now I'm trying to focus more on the on the Big picture, like uh, uh -huh. the sound, the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, also, if there's no lyrics, if it's a modern song, song, I'm gonna focus on the melody and uh, yeah. 
the composing part are it's mm -hmm. shaped mm -hmm. and the solo is less an obsession maybe like yeah. for the changes I don't know okay. like you change over, everybody changes over time so yeah it's I, know. I am right now man. I don't know if you understand like what I'm talking about. <laughs> I probably, you probably do. I do, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. Totally. It's, it's kind of weird. It's like abstract, but uh, yeah, I started learning love songs when I was like mm -hmm. 15, 14, mm -hmm. and a lot of Charlie Parker songs and mm -hmm. and bebop songs, and, yeah, and also some uh, jazz on arts, like mm -hmm. more like traditional from the swing area, area yeah. Or, yeah. But um, I, le I learned also like modern tunes. Mm -hmm. There's a, when I learn a new song, usually I, now I focus on um, memorizing the the song, try to make it my own, mm -hmm. and focus on uh, on developing uh, some routine exercise yeah, yeah. on the on the song. Okay. You know, yeah. So to to make it like more like um, like you know in part of me. You know. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think? So. I don't know if you notice, but a lot of violinists tend to stick to like traditional jazz and to like swing or gypsy jazz, especially in Paris, in France. Yeah, um, or in London too. No? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how you sort of don't? Is that right? You, no, I don't. But I, I still do sometimes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my main thing. No? Yeah, how, but how? Why do you think? Well. Why do you think violinists do that? Why is it? That I, don't, I don't know. You yeah. have to ask me. Look, I love it. So <laughs> when I was in Paris, I, I used to do that, but um, I just I, I just can't. I get bored if you I bored. do the same thing all the time. And if everybody else does the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, it's another excuse for me to do something else mm -hmm. because I just can't be in the middle of a group and do the same thing as anyone else. It's just my personality. I, mm -hmm. I like to be on my own. Yeah. To be on my own path. Yeah, so yeah. when I was in Paris, I was playing gypsy jazz, and everybody else was playing that. Yeah. Everybody wanted to play a certain style. Yeah. And I did the style. I did it with some of the, the greatest musicians. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, for this style, I learned from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hung out, uh, hung out with them, mm -hmm. and it was great. You know, it's yeah. a great, great moment. But um, I, I'm uh, really wanted to and at once to develop my my own path, my own voice. So. Mm -hmm. I try to explore some of the music, and there's other violin player did doing the same thing. You know, like yeah, Jean-Luc yeah. Ponty did that a yeah, yeah. long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many others. You know? Yeah. And um, so I'm I'm trying to to be able to play uh, what I have, uh, what I hear, what I have uh, with my influences, and, yeah, yeah. and tr not try to stick to to a style. You know? yeah, yeah. Even though I really like gypsy jazz, you know, and I can play it, but. Um, it, yeah. It's not something that I would feel like um, uh, totally satisfied if I, I, yeah, I yeah. just do one thing. I like to also compose m my music and do play different styles of music. You know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if, yeah, I imagine if most of your influences are playing. Also, know. it's really easy to play for violin. I have to say, gypsy jazz is it's made for for this instrument. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's almost like the classic of. Uh, of jazz for violin, you know, so yeah, you can yeah. you can really play it with basic knowledge. You, know, you yeah. don't even know you need to know a lot a lot to play gypsy jazz on the yeah. violin. You just need to have a good sense of time, yeah. and probably a good intonation. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes not even a good intonation, but uh, <laughs> you just probably have to have a sense of, sense of time. Yeah. And you don't need to know the changes to play gypsy jazz like most of the time. And uh, so. Do you reckon? I don't yeah. know if I agree with that. I um, think that there's a lot of violinists that maybe don't, but I think to make it sound good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, like to get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Yeah, get, to, you can play by here like easily. Is what I mean. People get away with it a lot yeah, more exactly. in gypsy jazz. You're not going to. So get that's away why there's like so many vampires staying yeah. in Versailles because uh, it's very accessible. Yeah. But when you you get to more modern stuff or, or different style of, of music, improvised music, yeah. it's more uh, demanding for the violinist yeah. because you have to really actually put some uh, some like different um, work up into yeah. it. So maybe. There's less people there because it's less uh, attractive and less easy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's yeah. just because it's uh, it's not it doesn't sound as good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I do. So. I do. No, I agree with you. I think that it is. I think it feels like if you you can step into a into the gypsy jazz world and, and probably get gigs from just yeah 
just you know, even if you don't know the changes because people are just like oh a violinist great you know oh, yeah. and then it's yeah so I guess it breeds yeah I know what you mean <laughs> um, the only thing I do find is with gypsy jazz and stuff like that it's always a lot more of a sort of acoustic form and it works a lot better for the violin because violin is really hard to Amplify. that's one thing I've always found really hard is play yeah amplify amplification as soon as you amplify you're using a pickup it's different you know you're like you're sort of playing a different it feels like you're playing like a different instrument for me anyway because what, what do you use what do you um, use I use Shetler right now oh, yeah. I use Shetler as well for um for, sure enough, for, fair enough, it's yeah, a good one. Yeah, 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 it is good. <laughs> um, but I find that I have to play differently if I use yeah, the it? shirtler, and then if I'm, or if I'm just playing into a microphone, you know, or if I'm just playing with yeah, no a, microphone. Yeah, it's, it's something I'm, I'm going to do in my course. I'm, I'm, I just like um, joined the UNT, University of North Texas. Oh, I'm cool. going to be a professor for jazz writing, and nice. one of my courses is going to be on amplification and because it's something I've been working on for yeah. years and uh, it's really important like, to know um, some of the basics of the yeah. equalization yeah. and uh, pickups and mm -hmm. uh, microphone and yeah. DPA and things. So the thing is like when you use a, it's true when you use a, a pickup mm -hmm. or if you play acoustic mm -hmm. you're going to have a different approach, different, different technique, different phrasing yeah. sometimes and different ideas because yeah, yeah. that not, not sure to be, uh, like you get you get inspired by the sound of I get, you're, I totally you're producing, agree. so you're gonna play in a different way. No, yeah. but, um, I think it's like you have to try to uh, it's what I try, I try to do to adapt to, mm -hmm. to those different situations. Yeah. But uh, at some times I also find some way to make my violin, my violin sound really acoustic, even with a pickup. You know? Yeah. But in order to do that, you need to uh, to be in an acoustic setting with yeah. other musicians around you that are also playing in the volume or with acoustic instruments yeah, yeah. that is good for the violin. Yeah. As soon as you're gonna play with a drum drummer and an electric keyboard or electric guitarist or any yeah. kind of a saxophone player um, or trumpet, you're gonna have to use a pickup to be able to or, yeah. or a microphone to be able to sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, to be able to play fairly, because if you if you play like acoustic at this moment, you're gonna have to push yeah. on the on the bow, and you know that's not going to be very real. Uh, yeah. Where you're gonna play, you know? you're gonna play like forced uh, yeah, in yeah. a way. So it could be good for kind of certain certain music if you, yeah. the violin is more like an accompanying instrument yeah, or yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah. Then it's fine. But yeah. if the violin is part of um, uh, of a solo or yeah. part of um, a front instrument, front line, yeah. you you need to 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 have a s amplification uh, yeah. to be able to be uh, yeah. uh, relaxed and play in a way that you play when you play acoustic. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a big big it's a big question. But yeah, I find I think like you know if like Didier Lockwood and Jean Luc Ponty oh, yeah. they like mastered that. I feel they like especially I don't know yeah I'd say Didier. He's mastered that amazing way of playing really like really fast like like but with ampl I don't know he like with a pickup and yeah. it's it's like it's, it's like its own thing yeah uh Dioku was using a uh, Shetler too and um he, he, it's true that he, he 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 was really good at that he had many years to develop his uh his sound like this with uh, a pickup yeah. very electro acoustic sound uh, yeah. sometimes very acoustic but still amplified yeah and he, he, he was playing most of the time uh, amplified no mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't he didn't sound too much sometimes but sometimes yeah. if you li listen to some older recordings of him the sound the sound was very different and yeah um, so you can see also the influence he was really influenced by uh, Johnny Ponty yeah yeah for the sound yeah. and yeah those guys were really like uh, I just recently did a show with Jean-Luc um, oh, yeah. in, in New York. We, he invited me to play um, with his band mm -hmm. from the 70s. And we did a soundtrack and I saw the way he was like, um, uh, like doing the amplification and yeah. uh, the soundtrack. It was really interesting to see. Yeah. It, he has an engineer traveling, traveling with him all the time. Sure, yeah. And he knows exactly how to make the, the violin sound yeah. uh, perfect. Like, and even though he has that, he's always concern and worry about how to sound the best as possible so yeah, yeah. he still work on that uh, and he's, he's like in the 70s and uh, mid 70s and yeah and he's still he's, he's still like on a 
uh, researching yeah. to get the best sound because it's always it's difficult. difficult. Yeah, yeah. He's, even he's, at seventy years old, you know. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think it's and years of rock, uh, rock, you know, years of yeah. stage and things. Like that, so. Yeah, <laughs> I found if I've, if I've heard like recordings of either of either Didier or um, Jean Luc Jean Luc playing acoustic, they actually sort of sound now like they're playing with their pick up yeah, they, they have, have their the same own sound, sound yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy that's true it's, it's what I said uh, Pat Metheny yeah. the guitar player was saying something like this he said he, he used to be really worried about his sound and wanted to travel with his uh, gears like mm -hmm. always the yeah. same amp the same preamp yeah. the same engineer because he didn't want to uh, have a different sound yeah. but then uh, recently he, he, he couldn't do that because of some technical issues and yeah. he had to use different amp, different guitar yeah. and he looked back at the video that was made by a fan and yeah. he was surprised that he sounded exactly the same. Exactly the same. So he was like, um, wow, maybe I was yeah. too OCD about this. Yeah. And in fact, uh, the, the sound that you produce, it's mostly maybe like 80% from your technique and your approach on the instrument itself. Yeah. So the 20% the, the remaining is it's, it's the amplification and, the, and the, um, the gear you use, but then also the people don't hear the 20% necessarily and even you, it, on, on the, at the moment on stage you can hear it probably it's too harsh, too high, too yeah. thing. it kind of block you to improvise freely, yeah. you know, sometimes. Yeah. But, so. yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I think amplification can really make a difference to how you play. Definitely. Yeah, recently I was in a on tour in a West Indies and we didn't have a sound engineer and the, the gears were really really bad and um, I stopped playing. It was very very high pitch and mm -hmm. very difficult to play. Yeah, and uh, it instantly. Me, yeah, it was really hard for me to, to feel happy. Yeah. You know, I it instantly can't being do it. upset. You know. Yeah, it happens <laughs> to me a lot. It does happen to me a lot. What time are we on? Oh, yeah, I have a few minutes left. I have a few minutes left. I'm like, I'm here, I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what have I, what have I think about? It would be interesting, I know we, we, um, we, have, we, we sort of spoke about it at the beginning, your sort of beginnings, but you've got a musical brother who oh, yeah. plays jazz, right? You yeah, play he's, a, he's my twin. And, uh, that must have had a big uh, influence yeah, on your yeah, we, jazz we, playing. Yeah, yeah we, we practice when we are like, um, 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 when we are like about um, uh, 13, 14, we are pra practicing together all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so I imagine he he would have he would have you know been listening to stuff you know like lots of. Oh, sorry, we've got a, no, we've got a guy near us, don't we? It's all part of it, though. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's good. We're, you can hear. Well. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Actually, that I think you, I think you can hear most of us. Yeah, I can imagine that must have been a big part of your musical. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He, he really he was really into. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's right, Connie. It was really, it was really into Herbie Hancock and okay, yeah. and Kenny Coughlin yeah. uh, at a young age, and uh, yeah. he, he checked uh, Bill Evans too. Yeah. So he, he taught me a lot about the uh, changes in um, mm -hmm. harmonization and uh, yeah. comping, like yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, voice leading, all yeah. those things. It, Tony, my twin, was like really into it, and yeah. I was I was in different, I was more into Paraphernalia at the time, so okay, it's yeah. good for to have. It was kind of my teacher, you know. I said, we are teaching each other. That's great. That when we were kids. Great, yeah. yeah, it was great. We are fighting also. And, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, brothers, twin brothers. Yeah. Especially when we were young. Like yeah. we doing the same thing with the same music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like I a lot of like, uh, yeah. tension. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. somebody was doing things and uh, I couldn't play, maybe, or he couldn't yeah. play. And yeah, yeah. Get frustrated. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know what you mean? It's bad enough if you don't even do the same thing. Yeah. If you're yeah. doing the same thing. But did you both did you mo both move to New York around the same time? No, I moved to New York in uh, 2007, something, mm -hmm. and he moved yeah. to New York like four years ago. Okay. And then he, he he moved to LA like yeah. um, a year ago or something. Yes, actually, right. I don't, right. So he doesn't live in New York anymore. Okay. okay. He lives in Los Angeles. Right. Okay. okay. He's a genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like this, no, he's, he's There's some nice stuff about him. I don't know about genius because uh, well, I think that, uh, genius is a, it's uh, overused uh, word, but he's a, he's a really good, good musician. Yeah. Great. You think that's an overused word? Why do yeah. you think that? 
I don't know because uh, people today, like in, this, in our society, they just want to be to be shiny. You know, yeah. they want to be like on the front, and uh, we say we we say, oh, you're amazing. I love you. Yeah. We use those words like love you. You're genius. Uh, you're my brother. Yeah. All those things yeah. they don't they l lost uh, kind of a, a real sense of it because it's overused and it's used superficially, and people just uh, say that as a as a gimmick almost. So, yeah. um, I think I know what you mean. I think it's. I, I agree with you, man. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. So, we're like I, that. I understand like positive energy is nice <laughs> to be nice and friendly to each other. Yeah, yeah. But uh, sometimes we get into into it and we forget about the sense of it. And I, I met I met maybe like uh, uh, one genius in my life. Like uh, I mean, like yeah, a few. And uh, Jean Luc Ponty for me for me is a genius, no, yeah. for sure. When you look at his story and you look at uh, I change the. the Violin, like yeah. the instruments have yeah. all around the world and in France, yeah. the entire planet with his uh, with his uh, music, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually uh, underrated, I think. Yeah, and, I, I uh, agree with you because he's still alive, he's still here, he's a legend, he's yeah, a yeah. living legend, yeah. you know. And I think it should it should be like everywhere, like playing yeah. like in every festivals every year yeah. right now, you know. So. I think I think I think he, the style he does just isn't popular at the moment. I know it's not a, sometimes it's not really about the popular popularity for me because I think as a, in the history of music, yeah. people were like um, we are at the festival, we are booking agents, we are that are um, uh, producers, music yeah. uh, fans. Yeah. They, they should know if they yeah. do their research. Yeah. And if uh, because it's not about style of being popular, I think it's about history right now. We're yeah. talking about, and I'm sure in uh, in 20 years from now we'll, we'll be like looking at it like, wow, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, uh, in 50 years from now, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, but I, I do, I do know the guys like uh, is a part of music history, and, and not only for jazz, for violin, which is yeah, even exactly big, bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like use it, make a little, a little thing so we can yeah. still hear. Is that going to work? Yeah, we have yeah. this for age one, twenty seventeen, so we can. No, I can uh, still hear him. There's a guy way. talking about business over there. Super boring. But anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you about what you say when you talk about people saying, you know, being fake and being. Oh man, I love you, man. That's the. Uh, I agree with you. I think that's yeah. in the UK. <laughs> that's the, that's. We're not like that. Oh, yeah? No, <laughs> no, no. There's not as much. It's really in America then. Well, you find a lot of it in. <laughs> don't say that, man. <laughs> you find a lot of it on. What I do find is you find a lot of it online. So people talk. Not talk, but they type it. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're happy to say it. There's all this stuff on social media. People are happy well, to be faking that. Website. But no one's like. People aren't like that in sort of real life, I, I find, in the UK. I find most of it does come from social media. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's strange. What time are we on? Do How are you doing? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go then. Yeah, I gotta go. Well, this has been fun. Did you have any uh, last questions? No? Any last yeah. questions? Yeah. What yeah. strings do you use? Oh, <laughs> nice. So I use um, I used to use every string possible. I was yeah, changing over time. Yeah. yeah. And recently I just uh, found out that I like dominant. I Did went you, back yeah. to, the, to the basic. Did you? Dominant with a E got broke out. Uh, uh, very cheap, the cheapest E string you can find and doesn't whistle, yeah. it's perfect. It's the one uh, Yasha Ifets was using Is it? a long time ago. And it's, uh, it's called gold broke out yeah. uh, E string, just like regular medium, uh, loop end. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think two dollar a string. Like wow. for string. It's I bought like ten of them like, two years uh, two, two days ago. Right. And the for dominant I just use a dominant with a silver D. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they are good. They, they don't last for long. Yeah. yeah. But they are as, uh, affordable. The good things that like you can find them anywhere yeah, yeah, in the world. Yeah. yeah totally. Dominant so when you're on tour way. and you have a broken string, you yeah. can keep your own set. But when I was using the fancy strings like Visions or yeah. even like the Eva Pierre Street, I don't know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Street, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to say yeah. it, but that. Uh, all, those, all those things I find very expensive and, and not really reliable actually. And, yeah. and they don't work that well with amplification anyway. Ah, you right. So the, the dominant is a good, um, yeah. it's a good really like for me. I was using dominance for ages, but I recently got back to. Obligato. Oh yeah, obligato. Yes. It's but they're bad. expensive. Depends on what violin you have. I think. I've got quite. Anyway. My, quite, quite a, I've not got the thickest sounding violin, and it helps it. It helps it. I think. It's yeah. Good. Brings. 
which means uh, the yeah. dogs are out. Yeah, yeah. What's your, what is your violin? Uh, it's a Colin Maison yeah. from okay. 1889. Oh, right. French. French. Yeah. Is it a real Colin Yeah. Maison, right. From the, from the father. Right. Father. Right. It's really good. It's good. Yeah. Really old, really mm. good, really, really like, um, it works really well with amplification yeah. and acoustically. So I think it's a, it's a good, because I tried a lot of violins and sometimes very expensive ones. Yeah. Very expensive, like crazy yeah, yeah. expensive. And um, they, sound, they sounded good uh, acoustic, but as soon as you put a pickup or a microphone, yeah. it was really hard to amplify them without feedback or even like having this harsh. Yeah. Um, um, high pitch sounds yeah. because they are too clear, too bright. Yeah, but it yeah. is really That's warm. Awesome. He has a warm and You've a, got one a, yeah, right. and very like soft kind of. I mean, still some projection. Okay, yeah. And your bow? What you, My what bow is uh, Emil Miquel from France from 1910. Yeah. Uh, very light bow. I think yeah. it's about 56 gram. Right. It's really light. And most of my friends, they say, like, it's too light for me. I can't play that. I do yeah. play that. It's like impossible. Yeah. It's true. It's really hard to play classical music with it, especially if you, if you play like slow bow. Because right. the bow is so light, but you're going you're gonna to check. check. <laughs> you'll yeah. be like shaking if you, if right. you, if you play ah, with okay. it, like long tone. Okay. But uh, when you play fast uh, lines and you yeah, amplified, fast. it really works well. Mm. I'm, I'm going to buy a new bow like next, next month. A okay. bit like a German one, right. a bit like heavier. Yeah. <laughs> so I can use it for more for recording orchestra for orchestra recordings because yeah. I do some you orchestra do work. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of um, yeah, yeah. commercials, TV, yeah, and uh, films uh, yeah. scoring. Right. Where I, sometimes I compose, but sometimes I just play just in the orchestra. Yeah. And I find myself like using yeah. different bows. Sometimes yeah, it's better. Yeah. For for the group sound, you know. Sure. To blend. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So how long have we done? We've done we've done half an hour. That's all right. It's decent. All right, man. Thank Thanks thank very much. Thank you so much. It was a my yeah. pleasure to to be with you. I'm glad. Here. I'm glad. It's good. That's it. Thanks very much for listening to the Jazz Violin Podcast. Um, we've been talking to Scott Tixier. Um, my name's Matt Holborn. Uh, next month we are going to be chatting with Christian Van Hemert. Um, he uh, we actually already did an interview. But, uh, well, we did it over Skype, and uh, um, Christian had some uh, technical issues on his side, so uh, we're going to have to do another one, um, we're going to be, but that'll be, yeah, that'll be next month, I think. So, thank you very much, um, please uh, keep listening, and subscribe as well, that'd be really great, on, uh, wherever you're at, we're everywhere, I think, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Podbean, loads of places on youtube as well but it'd be great if you subscribed um because then you can uh, you can uh, you can hear all the episodes okay thanks very much bye